Right now, I wanna go over the foods that I've eliminated from my diet based on the food sensitivity test that I took. So again, my name's Drew. I've had psoriasis for over 20 years and I am really getting serious within the last couple years trying to manage and get rid of my symptoms. So at any given moment, I have over 80 spots up and down my body, mostly on my lower body, lower back, and legs. However, I do have some spots on my abdomen and my elbow and hands at times. Right now, everything is pretty clear up top, but my legs are pretty well spotted. So I took a food sensitivity test after trying the AIP diet for a long period of time. I was on that diet for over a year and I got immediate results and then plateaued, so I wanted more science behind what I was doing. So I took this food sensitivity test by Everlywell. You just put a few drops of blood on a pamphlet and then you mail it in. You get the results pretty quickly after that. Now, I was actually surprised at the results because I'm still eating a lot of foods that I tested high for. Now, sensitivity doesn't mean allergy and there's some other issues with this test. However, I'm at the point where I'm really experimenting and trying to figure out what works for me and my body and my symptoms. So I'm really controlling the diet. So I'm testing high for these foods, saying that I'm sensitive to them, but I was still eating these foods pretty much on a regular daily basis while I was on that elimination diet for over a year. And it was really interesting the foods that I tested for because I was very surprised by the actual results. So here I wanna go through them and cover the different foods that I tested for. So the first one was asparagus, didn't eat a lot of that. Then it was banana. I ate a lot of banana, pretty much a banana a day, and then one of my favorite things to make was gluten-free banana pancakes. Barley, didn't really eat much of that. Butter, wasn't eating gluten or dairy, so I didn't have any butter. Cashews, actually I found a gluten and dairy-free um, not an ice cream, a frozen dessert is what they called it, that was made from cashew milk. So I was eating cashews every now and then, every other weekend or so, we would have some of that ice cream, uh, non-dairy frozen dessert, excuse me. Uh, so I was still eating cashews, so there you go. Uh, lots of different cheese, uh, goat's cheese, mozzarella, processed cheese actually was normal for processed cheese, so I guess I could eat that. Sheep's cheese, um, and then here's a big one, chicken. Chicken was like a daily staple for me. I was eating chicken all the time. Anytime we would go out to a restaurant somewhere, pretty much the only thing that I could eat that was gluten and dairy free was like a chicken salad with some kind of balsamic dressing or sometimes no dressing. And chicken was pretty much a daily staple in my diet. Cinnamon. This was surprising. Those pancakes that I referenced, cinnamon and vanilla was what I was using. Coffee. So I've now eliminated coffee, and then I was drinking coffee on a regular basis as well. Then egg whites, egg yolks. Once I did the finish the AIP protocol, that was one of the first things that I added back in. So I was still eating eggs. And then gluten, I tested for, um, here's a good one, kale. So I don't have to eat kale anymore. That's my excuse. Uh, kefir, like kefir milk, lamb. I didn't eat a lot of lamb, but I would eat uh, gyro meat and stuff, and that is made from lamb. And then lobster, didn't eat a lot of lobster. It's not really in the budget, not a big seafood person, but lobster. And then the highest one was cow's milk, but that's okay. I wasn't eating cow's milk or goat's milk. I tested high for that. Mushrooms, I would eat mushrooms on a regular basis as well. Um, oysters, and then bell peppers. So some of these things, like a daily staple, you know, coffee, chicken, bell peppers, mushrooms, bananas, you think of healthy foods, but I tested for those. Then pine nuts, pineapples, pistachios, didn't really eat a lot of any of those foods. Poppy seeds, there's a poppy seed dressing that was one of my favorites that I was eating. Rye, wasn't really eating any rye bread, um, so that wasn't a big issue. Then spelt, I'm not really sure exactly, I think that's a type of grain. Um, squash, I was eating squash on a regular basis. Uh, so that's yellow squash, so I've eliminated that. Um, and then tuna, I would have tuna sandwiches, or tuna, you know, uh, pretty regularly. And so that was weird. Vanilla was very high. 
uh, wheat, which was uh, has gluten in it, so I tested for that. And then here is the kicker, baker's yeast and brewer's yeast. So, you know, gluten-free breads are still made with yeast. So I was getting gluten-free breads that still had the baker's yeast in it. So I wasn't really doing myself any favors there. Uh, so that might be, I might be onto something there. And so, and then um, yogurt was the last one. So, you know, of those 36, 37 foods, I was still eating um, a dozen of them and didn't really realize maybe those could be contributing to my symptoms getting better, but not completely going away. So still on that journey to help my psoriasis pretty much disappear completely. I am seeing some results on the initial start of this diet about three and a half weeks in. And the diet that I'm on is just eliminating these foods and then any type of processed foods where I don't exactly know what is in it. So still sticking to a really strict diet. And actually it's uh, just as hard as the AIP diet um, in the sense, uh, especially now that I have to cut out even some of those treats that I was having. So that's uh, a bit of a challenge there. However, the goal is to fix a problem that I have had for a long time. So that does help and make it a lot easier to stick with this. So the treats that I have really are just fresh fruit, uh, excluding bananas, but fresh fruit is something that I can enjoy. It's like a dessert. Um, just have to kind of change up my mindset on how I view food and what it does to my body. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. I thought it would be helpful to actually share the foods that I tested for. This might not exactly translate to somebody else being able to do it. However, I took the test and now I'm going to follow through to see what that yields as far as results. So I would highly recommend at least taking the test to see what you might be um, testing high for as far as a sensitivity to maybe try to piece some things together and see, okay, well, maybe that could be an underlying cause of my ongoing issue. So there you go. Again, my name is Drew. This is my psoriasis journey. I am sharing it with you along the way, hopefully to get to that point where I've at least uh, eliminated my psoriasis or gotten it down to a point where it's much more um, livable and I'm much more comfortable with the spots that I can manage. So there you go. And uh, that's it for today. I'll see you in the next one.